Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Over the past few nights, we've seen teams bursting at the seams with winners of just about every award going from Oscars to BAFTAs, Whitbreads to the Turner Prize. All of them no doubt tantalised by the glittering prize that so far has eluded them. And that's to be named Christmas University Challenge Series Champions. Whoever wins tonight's match will join the Courthold Institute of Art to play for that title in the final. Now, the team from Manchester University are here, having beaten Queen's University Belfast in the first round, and again, they're represented by a consultant surgeon who trains medical staff in war-torn countries, a writer, filmmaker and critic, a former young one and all-round entertainer, and an actor and writer. Let's meet the Manchester team again. Hello, I'm David Knott. Uh, I graduated from Manchester in 1981 in medicine. I'm currently Professor of Surgery at Imperial College and co-founder of the David Knott Foundation, which trains doctors in areas of conflict and catastrophe throughout the world. Hello, my name is Juliet Jakes. I graduated with a degree in history at Manchester in 2003. I'm now a writer, filmmaker, host of the Sweet 212 Arts podcast, and I teach at the Royal College of Art. And this is their captain, Hello, I'm Aid. I graduated in 1978 in drama and I'm mostly an actor and writer. Uh, my name is Justin Edwards. I graduated in 1994 with a degree in drama and French and I am mostly an actor and writer. Now, the University of Loughborough beat the University of Central Lancashire in their first round match. And again, the team reflects their institution's sporting specialism with one of England's top cricketers, a swimmer who has won Commonwealth gold, a poet, writer and broadcaster, and the captain of the Middlesex women's cricket team. Let's say hello to the Loughborough team again. Hi, I'm Monty Panasar, England international cricketer. I graduated in 2005 from Loughborough University and I'm currently studying an MA in international sports broadcasting. Hi, I'm Caitlin McClatchy. I graduated from Loughborough University with a degree in politics in 2011. I'm a former international swimmer competing at three Olympic Games um, and I now work in British Olympic sport. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Kate Fox. I got a BSc in Communication and Media Studies in 1996 and I work mostly as a poet and performer. Hi, I'm Naomi Dittani. I graduated from Loughborough University in 2015 with a BSc in Sport and Exercise Science and now I'm a full-time professional cricketer playing for London Spirit in the 100 in 2021. OK, the rules are the same as ever. 10 points for starters, 15 for bonuses. Starter questions have to be answered individually on the buzzer. OK, fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. Warren in Death Proof, Richard Gecko in From Dusk Till Dawn, Mr Brown in Reservoir Dogs and Jimmy in Pulp Fiction are among the roles taken by which filmmaker born in Tennessee in 1963? Manchester Edwards. Quentin Tarantino. It is. Well done. You get three questions on quotations from George Orwell's 1940 essay on Charles Dickens. According to Orwell, which early novel by Dickens is not a story at all, merely a series of sketches? The characters simply go on and on, <laughs> behaving like idiots in a kind of eternity. Any ideas, early Dickens? No, what came no, first? Uh, a lot of characters banging on and on. It could be any of them. It could be any of them, couldn't it? Uh, <laughs> Shall we say David Copperfield? Yeah. Come on, David Copperfield. David Copperfield. No, it's the Pickwick Papers. Mm. Which novel by Dickens uses, quote, the power of corpses to interfere with living people by means of idiotic wills? Its characters include Mr Boffin, Silas Wegg and Bella Wilfer. Mm. Mm. Wouldn't it be Bleak House? I'm just thinking of Bleak House. Yeah. 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 Bleak House. No, it's our mutual friend. In Orwell's words, which book is dominated by the guillotine? Tumbrils thundering to and fro and sinister old women cities. knitting as they watch. Tale of Two Cities? Mm, yeah, maybe. Tale of Two Cities. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Born in Yorkshire in 1907, which poet and dramatist collaborated with Christopher Ishwood on the plays 
The Dog Beneath the Skin, The Ascent of F6 and On the Frontier. Manchester Jinx. W.H. Jordan. W.H. Jordan is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three bonuses on Hollywood traditions. An anagram of the alias men. What name is used as a pseudonym for a filmmaker who has the direction of a film taken away from them or by a director who wishes to be removed from the film's credits? Nominate Edwards. Alan Smithy. Correct. First heard in the 1951 Western Distant Drums, what name is given to the distinctive yelp of pain, which, as a sound effect, has featured in hundreds of subsequent feature films? Mm. Mm. Don't know what that's heading for. No idea. Mm. Yowza? Yow, yow. Yaru. <laughs> no, it's the Wilhelm scream. Ah. And finally, to prevent members of the general public from receiving prank calls, which three-digit area code was used for telephone numbers in films such as Ghostbusters, as this exchange number did not exist at the time? Nominate Jakes. 555? Five, 555 five? Five, five is correct. Well done. <laughs> Another starter question. I need a two-word term here, building on Alfred Wegener's work on continental drift. What unifying concept, quote, revolutionised earth sciences by providing a uniform context for understanding mountain building processes, volcanoes and earthquakes. Manchester Edmondson. Tectonic plates. Yes, plate tectonics is the, the science of it You get three bonuses on the Manx photographer Chris Killip, who died in 2020. In 1972, the Arts Council commissioned Killip to photograph Bury St Edmunds and which West Yorkshire town the birthplace of Harold Wilson, it has an unusually large number of listed buildings. Is it? Huddersfield. Correct. Documenting the deindustrializing of North East England, which 1988 collection by Killip has a two word Latin title often seen preceding the word delicto? Is it in memoriam? Try it. Good guess. In memoriam. No, it's in flagranti. Yeah. In Flagranti and an earlier collection, The Isle of Man, incorporate texts by which cultural thinker whose works include Ways of Seeing and the novel G? Nominate Jakes. John Berger. John Berger is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see the opening verse of a long poem. However, all but the last words of each line have been removed. For ten points, give me the poem's title. Loughborough Fox. The Four Quartets. No, it's not. Anyone want to buzz from Manchester? You had the right author, it was The Wasteland. Ah. Yeah. So we're going to take picture bonuses in a moment or two. Too Fast to Live, Too Young to Die, Sex and Seditionaries are among the names given to the London clothing boutique owned by the impresario and musician Malcolm McLaren. Ah. And which British. Loughborough Fox. Vivian Westwood. Correct. <laughs> now, The Wasteland was one of the works listed on Penguin's 2020 list of 20 books that define the 1920s. For your picture bonuses, I want you to identify three more works from that list. Firstly, this is the opening line of which novel, published posthumously in 1925, the name of its main character has been redacted? OK, a German... a German novel. Published in 1925. Posthumously. Posthum oh, posthumously. Something by Thomas Mann. Uh, um, no, sorry, don't know. It's The Trial by Kafka. Mm. Secondly, this shows part of the contents of the debut collection of which US poet? Um, Langston Hughes. Correct. And finally, you're going to see a word cloud showing selected characters from a novel. The size of the names reflects the number of times they're mentioned. Name the novel's eponymous main character who should appear in the centre. Ooh. Ooh. Septimus Smith is ringing a bell. Is it ringing a bell to anyone else? Mm. I'm thinking James Joyce. I'm thinking... Eponymous. Hang on. So... Uh, not you, this is, because that's not eponymous, is it? Um, Finnegan's Wake? No, it's Mrs Dalloway. Oh. Ten points for this. For what common British bird do these words from an identification video refer? Quote, with its deliberate walking action, it often looks as if it's had deportment lessons. Its cry is a distinctive ringing, far-carrying... 
Usually repeated three times. Manchester not. Magpie. No, it didn't sound at all like a magpie. You can't I confer one of you. I hear the can... sound again, Jeremy, but no, that would be wrong. Um, heron. No, it's Love a carrion crow. Right, ten points for this. The godfather of electronic music and the father of disco are terms that have been used to describe which Academy Award winner? Manchester Edmondson. Giorgio Moroder. Correct. Ah. Well done. <laughs> three questions on plants. All answers have three word or doubly hyphenated names. What common name is given to plants of the genus Ornithogallum in the Lily family? It also refers to a celestial motif indicating the location of the nativity. Any botanists? David. Any any constellations you think of? Nothing. No. We don't know. It's Star of Bethlehem. Referring to the deep red colour of its pendulous flowers, what name is commonly given to the plant Amaranthus codatus, also known as the tassel flower? I think it's Christmas related, like the other. Yeah. Red flower, it's not a poncetti, that's a euphorbia. No, I don't. Uh, no. Uh, red flowers. We don't know. It's Love Lies Bleeding. What common name is given to flowers of the genus Myosotis? Yeah, doubly hyphenated or three words. Lily of the Valley. No, it's forget-me-not. <laughs> right, ten points for this. I want a two-word term here. A cured herring that suffers from a whirling sensation and has a tendency to fall or stagger might be the literal sense of what two-word term, a Lancastrian dialect <laughs> expression... Love for a fox. Giddy as a kipper. Giddy as a kipper is correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on lizards. Because they were thought to give warnings of the presence of potentially dangerous animals, such as crocodiles, what common name is given to lizards in the genus Varanus? Warning of crocodiles. It's a little lizard, warning of a big lizard. <laughs> Gecko? 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 No, they're known as monitor lizards. Since the 1990s, the West African Nile monitor has been considered an invasive species in which US state? Florida. Florida, yeah. yeah. Florida. Florida is correct. Named in part after an Indonesian island, what is the world's largest species of monitor lizard? Is it a Komodo dragon? dragon. Komodo dragon. Komodo dragon. Correct. We're going to take a music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can name the composer. Manchester Edmondson. Beethoven. It is Beethoven, yes. It's the Emperor Concerto. Part thereof. So you heard there part of Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5, 2020 saw the 250th anniversary of his birth. For your music bonuses, you're going to hear three of his works, and in each case, I want you to name the piece. Firstly, give either the number of this symphony or the single word informal name by which it is often known. Beethoven's Symphony is the only one. I, th I think it is Eroica. Oh, okay. Try that. I don't know. Yeah? Try that one. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's part of the Pastoral Symphony, number six. Secondly... One of these is going to be heroic. <laughs> <laughs> Any other names? I don't know. Symphony number nine. That's not one word, is it? Uh, we're going to go for heroic again. Well, you'd be wrong, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. again. It's the Battle of Victoria, of Wellington's victory. And finally, give either the number of this piano sonata or the single word informal name usually given to it. The Moonlight Sonata. Is that what it's called? The Moonlight Sonata? Moonlight Sonata. No, it's the pathétique, that. Yeah. Bad luck. Right, ten points for this. What single-digit number represents all of these? 
The number of worlds connected by the world tree Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, the number of flames a Hanukkah menorah can hold, the number of nights in the Hindu... Fe Love for a Tony. Nine. Nine is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on Dame Maggie Smith. Which film of 1978 earned Maggie Smith the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for playing an actress who fails to win the Best Actress Award? I'm not sure on this one. No. We don't know. It's California Sweet. Maggie Smith was nominated for but failed to win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her role in 1965 as which of Shakespeare's characters alongside Laurence Olivier in the title role? Laurence Olivier. So, did he play Hamlet? Did he play Othello? Did he play the Merchant of Venice? And then who was she? Shylock. Oh, yeah. No, it's a woman. Sorry. I've got to take your answer if you yeah, give yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's Desdemona. Somewhat overlooked by the Academy Awards, in which film of 1981 did Maggie Smith play the Greek goddess Thetis, again alongside Laurence Olivier, this time in the role of Zeus? We don't know, sorry. That was Clash of the Titans. Ten points for this. Which African-American author said that he grew up wanting to become the black version of Stephen King? In 2020, he became only the fourth writer to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction for a second time on that occasion for his novel, The Nickel Boys. Manchester Jakes. Paul Beatty? No. Anyone want a buzz from Loughborough? It's Colson Whitehead. Right, ten points for this. Almost 800 kilometres in length, the Southern Boo, or Bow, is a major river in which European country? It flows into the Black Sea about 50 kilometres west of the Dnieper. Manchester Edmondson. Ukraine. Ukraine is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on slow left-arm bowlers. In each case, name the cricketer from the description. Firstly, a Guyanese bowler who became the first spin bowler to take 300 test wickets. He was a member of Warwickshire's county championship winning side in 1972. It's a long more time back, isn't it? Uh, How's your cricket? Should we ask Monty? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, I should have got these. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Joel Garner. Joel Garner. No, he's a lot later. No, no. <laughs> but anyway. it a spin bowl. It's <laughs> Lance Gibbs. ESPN states that the purity and perfection of his art was a connoisseur's dream. Born in Punjab, he captained India during the 1970s, also playing for Northamptonshire. Ramadan. No, 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 no. no. Um, I think you should go with your first thought. It's not. Any thoughts from you? No, I'm just... No, I don't know. No. Uh, Ramadan. That was Betty. Born in Auckland, he played for his country at the age of 18. He's one of only eight players who have managed the double of 300 test wickets and 3,000 runs. Now, I've seen him. He's, um... What's his name? No, no, no it's not coming to me. It's Daniel Vittori. That's the one. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Monty Panasar was biting his tongue there. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. In most mammals, the short, thick, paired masseter muscles affect movement in what part of the body? Manchester knot. Uh, head. That is correct. It is in the head. It's the lower jaw. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on prominent people born in Luton. In each case, name the person from the description. First, a broadcaster whose career began when she appeared on the documentary series Blood, Sweat and T-Shirts, since then, she's made investigative programmes on child labour and women's issues. Stacey Solomon. Yeah, Stacey Solomon. Yeah. Is, it? Is yeah. that her name? I think so. Stacey Solomon. It's Stacey Dooley. Ah, mm. Stacey Solomon's the other one. Secondly, a stand-up comedian and former medical doctor who in 2011 became the fourth chaser on the ITV1 programme The Chase. Paul Sinner. Paul Sinner, yeah. Paul Sinner. Paul Sinner is correct. Finally, an author and broadcaster who rose to prominence after winning the Great British Bake Off in 2015. Bake Off watchers? 15. Nadia Hussain. Yeah, it might be her. Maybe. I think that's yeah. Nadia Hussain. Nadia Hussain is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture around now. Your picture starter, you'll see a painting. For 10 points, I want you to give me the name of the artist Manchester Edmondson. Monet. Monet is correct. Well done. <laughs> In the snow. 
1875. Following on from his train in the snow, you're going to see three more depictions of snowy railways. In each case, I want you to identify the artist for five points, please. Firstly... Hmm. Is that Kandinsky? Kandinsky? I think it's one of yeah. the... That might be Kandinsky. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I'll go with that. Kandinsky. That is Kandinsky. Winter landscape. Secondly... Hmm. Is that Pissarro? I don't know. I thought maybe Mary. Do you think? No, they're not. They're quite Mary's. Pissarro. No, that's Sisley. Mm -hmm. Approach to the railway station, Moray. And finally... That is that reason. I think so. Do you think? It looks a bit different. I'm not quite sure, but I don't know. Maybe better. Lowry. No, that's Russo's The Railway. Ten points for this. Denoting a family relationship... What word in English is the equivalent of Dada in Swahili, Fratino in Esperanto, Zeus in Dutch? Manchester Edwards. Brother. No, you lose five points. Love bread to Tommy. Um, grandfather. No, it's sister. So ten points for this. Named by immigrant Dutch farmers in the mid-17th century after a settlement near Utrecht, which of the five boroughs of New York is separated from Manhattan by the East River? Manchester Edmondson. Harlem. No, you lose five points. Loughborough Fox. Brooklyn. Brooklyn is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on books that won the Women's Prize for Fiction, previously known as the Orange Prize. In each case, give the title from the description. Firstly, a 2004 novel by Andrea Levy, set in 1940s London. It features four narrators, Hortense, Gilbert, Queenie and Bernard. It's something about a small island, I think. No. Okay. A small island. Small island is correct. <laughs> Secondly, a 2006 novel by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, set during the Biafran War. Characters include Ugwu, Olana, and Richard Churchill. Nah. I want to say something about fire. It's going to come to me, but maybe in quite a long time. <laughs> and time isn't infinite. Um, every, it's something like everything must go and then it comes. Ah. Come on. Yeah, just, um... It's half of a yellow sun. Oh, and yeah. finally, a tribute to E.M. Forster's Howard's End, a 2005 work by Zadie Smith featuring the Belsey and Kipps families. OK, so either White Teeth or The Autograph Man or another one that's humiliatingly I can't remember. So, 2005. <clears throat> White Teeth. No, it's On Beauty. Ten points for this. Born in 1910, which British philosopher was a major proponent of logical positivism? Manchester Jenks. A.J. Ayer? Correct, Freddie Ayer is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on popular music. In each case, give the title of the song in which all of the following people are mentioned. Firstly, from a song released in 1989, Harry Truman, Doris Day, Joe DiMaggio, Richard Nixon and Marilyn Monroe. Nominate Jakes. We didn't start the fire. Correct. From a song released in 1971, James Dean, Marx and Lenin. What year did you say? 1971. It's not American Pie, is it? That's a bit no, early. 60s, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Or is it? I think it's a bit earlier. It might be that. I've got anything else. Go for that because I don't remember. American Pie. American Pie is correct. Mm. And from a song released in 1990, Greta Garbo, Marlon Brando, Jimmy Dean, Grace Kelly, Fred Astaire, and Ginger Rogers. Is that I REM think one? Is I it? think that's Hello by the Beloved. Is it the REM one? What's the, REM What's the REM one? REM the one? end of the world as we know it. No, no, that's earlier. That's 80. That's on Documents 87. I think it's, it's Hello Madonna. By it's Madonna. Is it Madonna? Yeah. Oh, Vogue by Madonna. Yeah, yeah. Vogue. By Madonna is correct, yes. Well done. <laughs> what links the manner of death of Emile Zola's Camille, Charles Dickens' Steerforth, Shakespeare's Ophelia and Herman Melville's Captain A. Manchester Edmondson. Suicide? No. I'm afraid you lose five points. Love for Fox. Drowned. They're all drowned, yes. Fifteen points for your bonuses, then they're on trees and place names. What name for a widespread type of coniferous tree appears before the word rapids 
in the name of one of the largest cities in the state of Iowa. Spruce Rapids, not Douglas Rapids. Not Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids. Yeah. Cedar. Cedar is correct. Second, what common name of the genus of the Willow family is shared by a district in the London borough of Tower Hamlets? Type of willow tree, Tower Hamlets. White something? No. Do you live near there? <laughs> <laughs> Should we just think of a tree? Yeah. Come on. Um, can't think of any trees now. No. Uh, we don't know. It's poplar. What name is shared by a tree of the genus Populus and a major winter sports resort in Colorado? Colorado. <laughs> um, no, sorry, don't know. It's Aspen. Ten points for this. Taking their names from Norse mythology, Fenrir Aegir and Hattie are moons of which planet in 2019 a further 20 moons were discovered in its orbit using the Subaru ah, telescope in Hawaii? Panasar. Jupiter. No. You lose five points. Manchester not. Saturn. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on steel cities. Often known as the steel city of its country, the southern hemisphere city of Volta Redonda is in which country? No. Ukraine. Southern Hemisphere. Okay. Southern Hemisphere. Okay. Uh, Volta. What is that? I mean, it's quite Volta. an idyllic question, isn't it? So, Volta's. I think that's, I don't know, that's I think it's like somewhere in South Africa. Uganda. Somewhere in South on Africa. On the equator. Okay, try South Africa. South Africa. No, it's Brazil. Bocaro Steel City lies northeast of Ranchi, in which Indian state, formerly the southern part of Bihar? Indian states. No, no. Any Indian states? We might as well mention Kerala. Kerala. Punjab. Yeah. Kerala. Yeah. Punjab. Kerala. Nope. Jharkhand is the place I was right. looking for. Okay. And the Russian city of Magnitogorsk lies on what river? A conventional boundary between Europe and Asia. Isn't that? Is it not Turkey? Is it Is it, near, is it um, near, near Turkey? It's a river. Oh, yeah. No, but I'm just the um, what's that big river in the Volga? In... The Volga. No, that's. Do you think? Let's have it, please. The Volga. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Ural. Yeah. And at the Gong, Loughborough University have 70, Manchester University have 140. Well, bad luck, Loughborough. We're going to have to say goodbye to you. Shame you didn't get the cricket questions. Thank you very much, though, for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you, Manchester, in the final of the competition. But until then, it's goodbye from Loughborough University. Bye. It's goodbye from Manchester University. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>